Welcome to the One More Rep Podcast, where you take it beyond the barbell. I'm your host, Modingo, and with me, with, I think, one of my last cans of nowhere in particular, number 17, is my man Brody. What up? What's up, man? I was very, very pleased that Mo actually had this. <laughs> this is the second time Mo's brought beer, and uh, I've been I've been craving the 17 again, because you know they don't sell it anymore. Um, and so, so for reference, we, there's, this guy, he's a gypsy brewer. He makes one batch and then never makes it again. Yeah, so we're on, I think, batch 22, mm-hmm. something like that. And uh, and that one is the milkshake? Milkshake IPA with mango. It's freaking delicious. Yeah. So I wish I got more of these when, uh, when they first came out. As always, thank you for the likes, the shares, the comments. We really do appreciate those messages you guys send us because it generates a lot of content. Like our last bonus episode, that was because of you guys talking to us. Um, also, we just kind of dropped a message out as I was driving up here to the One More Rep Podcast Studios, <laughs> aka CrossFit Excess. <laughs> <laughs> We've been doing so well in the podcast world that I have upgraded our studio. <laughs> yeah, I got some hardwood floors now, some paint. Yeah. Got a little uh, bar over here. We completely upgraded just for the One More Rep Podcast. Absolutely. My, my members are going to be mad it really wasn't for them. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> my bad, guys. Sorry. Hey, but you're going to benefit anyway. Right. All right. So today's topic, we've had a couple messages about this. Yep. You and I have talked about this just like on uh, when we're doing some brainstorming sessions. Yep. And the topic we're going to talk about today is body image. Right. And a lot of times, yeah, yeah, it's a big deal. And I think, but the thing is when we've talked about it to other people, um, a lot of them automatically think we're just talking about women. Yeah. And that's absolutely not the case. No, both men and yeah. women. And as an owner, have, I've had guys come in who had severe body image issues. Yeah. And I can understand that. Absolutely. And me being a former fat kid, I can totally understand You know where this is all coming from. I'm an inner fat kid. <laughs> <laughs> I, not me, I'm an outer fat kid. <laughs> <laughs> so body image, what are we talking about? You know? how you feel about yourself, how you feel in your own skin, um, comparing yourself to comparing others. yourself to other people, which is a no, no. Um, but also I think more importantly, uh, when that comparative aspect comes from is growing up, looking in the media, magazines, televisions, movies. Uh, we, we look at these body figures that, um, Hollywood or whoever puts in front of us. Mm-hmm. And we assume that that's what we are, should aspire to look like. And it's that, and, is more heavily pushed to women. And I think it's ridiculous that, Mm -hmm. you know, I couldn't imagine me waking up every single day and trying to fulfill like a certain standard that I'm supposed to look and present. That society has levied on you from the, from the moment you were born. It's ridiculous. It's just women. I I, I don't care. I wake up and like take a shower and I come to the gym. (laughs) People probably think I'm homeless. I'm always in sweatpants. (laughs) Like what's this guy do? He drives a challenger and wears sweatpants. Well, I mean, he must be manipulating the system somehow. For, for me, what I really want to know is how many people out there who see Brody's videos on Tuesday think he only owns like three <laughs> shirts and they're all three quarter length. I have so many three quarter length, dude. <laughs> all of them are blue, except for this one you're wearing today is black. What? Yeah, I got I got a black one, a green one, a red one, a red one. <laughs> yeah, don't listen to Mo, guys. I do like the blue ones. So. <laughs> So anyway. if any of your boxes have a uh, blue three quarter shirts, uh, yeah. I don't, it don't have to be blue. <laughs> so again, yeah, I think from a young age we are presented with this image of what we quote air quotes are supposed to look like. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I remember reading one time and they uh, kind of dissected the Barbie doll. If it were if a Barbie dolls were anatomically correct, she would be like eight feet tall and like three hundred pounds just because of the proportions. Mm. You know, the old traditional Barbie Sounds dolls. Hot. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck fitting in a doorway. You know, um, but just just kind of those dysmorphic uh, views that people place on themselves based off what society says we uh, should look like. I think there's a little bit of that with guys, 
but I don't think it's nearly as prevalent because when you go to the checkout aisle, most of the magazines you see will be targeted towards females Mm -hmm. and having someone either in a bikini or some very slim cut thing versus, I mean, we see the, that's Photoshop. It's Photoshop. Yeah. But we see the men's fitness and the muscle magazines and it's some dude who's super yoked and, um, but that's like a small percentage of those magazines that you see at the checkout counters though. You know what though? There's a, there's a couple pictures I have that I look pretty jacked. It's just the filter I use. <laughs> you use the I, jack filter. Yeah. It's like, I have auto saved. I've, I've over time, <laughs> I've got the exact amount of shadows and color because I'm usually pale, like from the elbows down and the kneecaps down. And, uh, cause I'm not one of the guys that I don't work out with my shirt off, but, um, yeah, I got the jack filter pretty much. You have to start uh, pushing that out, man. No, dude. Bonus that's content mine. to our listeners. It's mine. <laughs> it's mine. It's, you know how long it took me to get a jack filtered? Well, for me, my secret is I wear medium shirts. <laughs> <laughs> Makes me look bigger. Dang, Mo, you look at jack. No, it's my medium. No, nah, I just uh, washed my shirt and hot on accident. <laughs> that's what all my friends say. Like when I do security at the clubs downtown, you know, like I, I post a couple pictures and like, dude, where'd you get the medium, this medium polo from? Haters going to hate, Mo. I told you. <laughs> In every aspect. Hey, when you're in a dark nightclub, you need to look as big as you possibly can so no one messes with you. Sure. And, and, the, and, the, and the flashlight helps too. Yeah, because they can't see you. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of where we're talking about when we're coming from the body image aspect. So, As a general, yeah. as yep. a general view, mm-hmm. we're, in, we're going to get in the fitness side of that. Yeah. And so who does this affect? And it's pretty safe to say everybody. Yeah. I mean, men, women, there's, there's really, there's no bias. Once again, like you just said, the, the focus on women and, and then it's disproportionate. It is. But like I said, when we first started, you know, I've had guys come in and are very insecure. They don't want their shirts to pop up. They, they worry about, they wear really baggy clothes mm-hmm. and that's when they first start the gym and I get it. And, and they're actually super, super hard on themselves. Um, because most likely from, what I know they're attached to their previous sport, their college self, college or high school mm-hmm. self, then they've let themselves go. And that's usually what kickstarts men to get into CrossFit. To be honest, mm-hmm. it's uh, a large majority is they used to do some sort of sport and they were in some sort of shape. And then, you know, when they hit their thirties, they kind of let it go. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, they're tired. They finally, something happened. They're, they're a triggering event. Yeah. And that happens typically in men, I would say, since I'm a guy. And mm-hmm. uh, so something triggers you to get you off your ass and actually start getting after it. But when you get there and you realize how out of shape and far behind you are, you really start. That can be your, intimidating. Intimidating. You start picking yourself apart. You start putting yourself down. You look in the mirror, you don't look, you're not happy, you're not confident, you don't have a swagger. Mm-hmm. Um, and then that's, and the same goes for females, but it is the guy side. I've seen it. And for guys, we touched on a little bit about this show when we talk about mentality and everything, but also things like depression can be resultant from yeah. that. You know, you get back in the gym, you're like, oh shit, I'm not the dude I, I thought I was, mm-hmm. you know, and depending on how your life is and how you are set up emotionally, you know, this could be a damaging event to you, you know, to get crushed in a workout. Crushing a workout and damaging the fact that you finally get a, enough motivation to get into the gym mm-hmm. and then <laughs> you get, you get dropped and you're, you're so disappointed on your performance and how everybody else is so much better than you mm-hmm. and how much better they look than you. And they're wearing these medium shirts yeah. and they're looking jacked or, you know, they take their shirt off. You're like, dang, that dude's got abs. Like mm-hmm. I got a, I got a flab. Yeah. And it, like, it's just, it can be. It can be very, very intimidating. And if for listeners out there, if you reflect when I talked about my very first workout, like I almost quit during the warm up, which is just three rounds of Cindy, because there were these girls that were like half my size and, you know, a third of my age right. just destroying me. And then emotionally, that was hard to swallow. Mm-hmm. And then let alone go through the workout and watch these younger people just destroy me because I had that image of my older self, you know, where I felt I should be able to compete with these people. I couldn't do a pull up. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I couldn't box, I couldn't do a 24 inch box jump, right? you know, and it was kind of in that moment where I said, I took three steps towards the door and then stopped myself. Cause I was like, no, you're, you're being a punk, get your ass back in there. But I think the reason why I kept going back because I didn't want to feel like that anymore. And the only way I was going to get over that was by going back right. and again think, yeah. and again and again. And I think that we're every day in CrossFit that you've come every day. You're faced with decisions like, are you going to push through it, the suck, or are you going to let the suck crush you? Right. Mm-hmm. Mo had to make a decision, and 
is he going to quit or is he going to fight this? And so he doesn't feel a certain way about himself because there's nothing worse. And, you know, I go through it occasionally. I'm in a funk right now. Like I go to, you know, I get really busy and then put a lot of energy into so many things Mm -hmm. besides myself. Then I let myself go and not Mm -hmm. on purpose. And, um, then I find myself making a couple of excuses. I really could probably work out, but I don't. And then I fall into this groove of like, now when I do work out, I get crushed Mm -hmm. and it's my own programming. So I feel even worse. (laughs) (laughs) And, uh, and I, and like, I'm just getting run into the ground and not that I, I compare myself to anybody else, but you know, I'm used to competing and hanging and beating uh, with certain group of people. We compete a lot. Mm-hmm. And when I fall off what my expectations are, I take it, I take it pretty hard on myself. And especially in a workout, I literally call myself a little bitch and, mm-hmm. and just, I take it pretty hard. And it's, that was my, that's my fault. And it's not, but it's easy to, to get away from it and then stay there. Mm-hmm. So, and same thing, you know, I'm going through this rut where every weekend, literally this month, I, I mean, I had, I DJed at a, um, at a college, then I turned around and I had uh, a big breast cancer fundraiser. Mm-hmm. Uh, last weekend, I was at that uh, college festival where I got punched in the face by a little girl who was <laughs> on something. Um, bonus content for that, kids. And then this past weekend, I had a wedding. You know, and all this time I'm having to plan and organize, and then I have a contest that, or a comp that I got going on next month or in two months. So it's real easy for me to lose focus and get, you know, tied up with the details, you know, you know, and on top of this, I'm retiring from the air force here shortly. So I got to get ready for that. So it's real easy for me to get tied up in the tasks and forget about the things that help me stay mentally and emotionally strong, which is my fitness. Right. You know, so I've, there's been a couple of times when I look in the mirror, I'm like, uh, hey, fat ass, <laughs> um, you forgetting I, something? I agree, man. <laughs> and I do the same thing. And this is, we're letting you guys on the female side, I guess, guys already know what we're talking about. Yeah. You, you kind of, you, you look at yourself and I don't, I don't feel ashamed to just like, what did I do? <laughs> like I've let myself go. Yeah. Like I just, and then you start really going through it and you start, there's nothing, no one, most of the time you can't blame anything but yourself mm-hmm. to certain points. Um, but we do think about that and it does usually light a fire under yeah. my butt and that, and I have a competition in two weeks and I'm not even close. <laughs> Sorry for my team. Um, but I'll, I'll be there. I promise. <laughs> and, um, but that's in the male side, the female side, you know, they get hammered even harder because most of the time, uh, we can, we can feel this way about ourselves. Mm-hmm. Right. But no one's talking smack about us. Yeah. No one's, no one's dogging me on social media about how I look or my family yeah, or my friends. You no, know, they're, they're not doing this. And this is what really triggered, you know, I've, I've been wanting to really kind of talk about this for a while and, you know, it just hasn't really hit the lineup yet. And it had someone bring it up to me this past two weeks ago mm-hmm. at, at a, a competition oh, yeah, yeah. and uh, talking to some people who listen to this and, and it just sparked it again. And women get criticized way too much on social media. It is ridiculous. The comments that women, uh, especially in, in, in CrossFit, they, they're trying, they look like men. Mm-hmm. Okay? That's, that's one of the common things you hear people because they have muscle. Yeah. They're you're bulky. Yeah. You're bulky. What do you try? What do you do in trying to look like a man? You know, it's, you know, a lot of CrossFit. I mean, when you're working out, you don't wear makeup, right? And it's, mm-hmm. so people think, what well, you don't even want to try to look like a girl now. And it's just stupid. Like, how, how, can, you, how can you make that assumption? They're yeah. working out. And, and the only reason I'm laughing is because there's been multiple times where my female athletes have come into the gym in their, like, grown-up clothes. Yeah. And I don't recognize Who them. Who are you? And I'm like, no, I've actually yeah. introduced myself. To a couple of my athletes, and she came in one day to pick up her daughter. I'm like, "Hey, I'm oh, you know, is there anything I can help you with?" She's like, "It's Erica," and I was like, "Oh, wow, hey. you, 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 you don't have your hair up in a ponytail, <laughs> and you're not wearing shorts, so yeah. and you're not in a pile of sweat." <laughs> yeah, exactly. So. Yeah, and you know, but you know, because it's just I don't ever see my athletes in their normal state because they're usually coming, you know, into the gym ready to do battle. And, and, and they're, they're about doing work. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and I appreciate that because they come in, they're setting an example for someone in their family. Yeah. And I'm supposed to. Yeah. And then for them to be ridiculed for choosing a healthy lifestyle, it's, 
makes you want to put, you know, punch, punch somebody in the face. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Mo just took the words out of my mouth. <laughs> if you don't, I like, I would, I, I like to talk about punching people. Doctors are definitely <laughs> on, the, on the top two of my list. And these family members are people who uh, criticize these family, female the quote uh, friends. Yeah. And quote friends. Yeah. Uh, these females that are in CrossFit that have absolutely been crushing it. And they may weigh 135 pounds, but they're jacked, mm-hmm. right? And then people are like, man, you're so bulky. You're so huge. And they're actually small. Mm-hmm. They're not that big, they're, but they're toned. Yeah. They have muscle definition. They have traps, right? Mm-hmm. Because we're Olympic lifting. We're lifting heavy things. And this is now, you know, uh, strong as is, strong is the new skinny is a big, uh, yeah. big saying in CrossFit. And I totally agree with that. Like, these people put copious amounts of hours into the gym and themselves and something they love. And they're not doing it to the, for the fact they want bigger traps. It's just a subset of all their hard work. It's a secondary work. impact of yeah. all the hard work they're yeah, putting they're in. They're putting so much hard work in and they feel great about themselves. Cause it's, we've talked about in the past when, when women are the hardest to get to start CrossFit, but once they do, they're the most dedicated. It's very empowering to them to put 50 a, pounds over their head. Yeah. For the first time they're yeah. like, Holy crap, you know, this is awesome. They start feeling really good about themselves. Because they've achieved things that they never thought possible. Yeah. They're dropping inches. They don't even care about their body weight anymore. Mm-hmm. They're getting the inches off. They're feeling great about themselves. They're improving on the skill. They're getting stronger. They're achieving things on a daily basis. And then what do you have? It You go to a family function and this talk to smack and say, you, you're you starting to look like a man. Mm-hmm. How could you even say that? to If a family member ever said that to anybody in my family, there would be a legitimate fight. Like, mm-hmm. There would be instant confrontation, and I would drop the hammer on because I think it's the most disrespectful thing to say to a female when they're obviously fit. Mm-hmm. They're not taking steroids, which is another misconception for a lot of women. They're on steroids of mm-hmm. some sort because they're strong. No, it, they put a lot of work in. Their body's starting to reflect that. Why are they being judged any different than a male athlete of the same caliber? And I think the new phrase that you hear going around is fit shaming. Right. And, and we had one of the people that when, was, when we talked, we were going to talk about doing this today. Mm-hmm. That's what she said to us. And that's just ridiculous. How can you. Why would you chastise someone for being healthy? You talk about bullying. It's just. Just because it's not what you choose to do doesn't mean it doesn't make that person feel good about themselves. And I've told you this on many, I've told Mo many times when people say things like that, they're utterly jealous of you. They are jealous of your work. You're de- jealous of your dedication. They're jealous of how you look. They're jealous of every aspect that you have done. So their only angle is to talk smack mm-hmm. and try to put you down because it happens in the CrossFit business world. That happens in life. That happens in now the fitness side of, there's just no escape. People are always going to be these pathetic losers to put people down any chance they get and be a little, all the hard work they've done. And before we even started this show, um, I remember talking to a colleague of mine who had made some life changes and was losing weight and modifying the way they ate and everything like that. And you just making some positive, healthy life choices for herself and for her family. And she said she had gone to dinner with a bunch of her friends that she hadn't seen in a while. And she was, you know, eating a certain way, you know, you know, meat, meat green, you know, you know, not using, you know, gallon of ranch dressing and all that stuff. And she said, one of her friends immediately looked at her and was like, why are you eating like that? Right. While the rest of them were eating, you know, chicken fried steak or, you know, something covered in some sort of gravy or sauce and cheese and all that stuff. And, and she's felt like she was being bullied because She she was making healthier choices. I I'd, mean, have punched it, her, I'd have punched her and the gravy. Does it? <laughs> I mean, come on, Mo. I, I mean, can you, I mean, does the word bullshit come to mind when you hear a story like that? There's just people like that just in, in my entire life. I've always been the person who sticks up for the person getting bullied. I've always been the person to support someone that is just, you know, down on their luck or whatever. I'm always there for those people. I, I don't like these arrogant people who talk smack. Mm-hmm. Like, I just hate them. Like I really want to destroy people who have the nerve first off in front of a group, you're out to dinner Mm -hmm. and they're going to criticize you for what you ate. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I also understand it can go to the highest degree of don't be the prick that is so clean in their diet. They can't eat a piece of cake at a birthday. Mm -hmm. Don't be like, Oh no, I can't eat that. Doesn't fit in my macros. (laughs) What? (laughs) 
what's a macro? <laughs> Eat the piece of cake. It's your nephew's birthday. All you have to like, say is, no, I'm no, good. Yeah. And that's what happens. Yeah. So it does go. There are people to take it to the extreme of like, uh-uh, that ain't my, you know, whatever, this stupid stuff. Mm-hmm. I just... Drives me nuts. Like, look, eat the piece of cake or don't eat yeah. it. But don't be a douchebag about it. Like, <laughs> no, I I just ate. Make up something, yeah. right? Don't be. Don't tell everybody about your damn meal plan that it ain't going to fit into. Like, there's a there's a. Are you are you in regional? Even if you're a regional athlete, go eat a piece of cake. You yeah. train more than enough to eat a yeah. piece of cake, and it might put, make you. Smile. I'm sure your volume. <laughs> I mean, because you're already hating life because of the volume. Go eat a piece of cake and maybe, just maybe have a scoop of ice cream with it. Like, if you don't want it, send it to me because I love cake. <laughs> it's my inner fat kid, though. But, yeah, it's just ridiculous. Yeah, man. And the impact that this has on the individual, yeah, depending on who they are, but no matter how strong you are, I think you keep hearing these things and that those people keep chipping away, and eventually something happens. You become less excited about working out, Mm -hmm. or you can, can, I'm not saying this is across the board, but you hear enough of anything positive or negative and it has, it has a toll on you. You know, people telling you, oh, well, you look too bulky. Oh, why are you working out so much? And I think where this kind of becomes true is when we see someone start a new relationship that's within our community and then all of a sudden they stop showing up Mm -hmm. and you talk to them and you're like, hey, what's going on? Well... Things have changed or whatever. Or And I remember I had one athlete where she played, she played up, told me that her boyfriend didn't like the fact that yeah. she was stronger than he was and he wanted her to quit CrossFit. Step your game up, bro. I'm like... I mean, seriously. And, and you're going to continue in a relationship with this individual. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, today it's CrossFit. Tomorrow... It, what's next? Yeah, that's that's... We're going to the control factor. But yeah... The, the thing is, I think people take so much direct offense, especially the closer that person is to them. If your mom is saying that you don't look like a girl anymore, you're starting to look like a boy because mm-hmm. you have muscles, or you're not feminine enough, um, and you're looking bulky, and the closer that person is to you, the more and you're closer hurts. in your circle, the yeah. probably more, more apt you are to listen to them. To listen and how it hurts you 10 times more than some troll on social media that just watched you clean and jerk 225 as a female. Now they're talking smack about this, this, and that. And they're just, they're hating because... Shout out to Kara getting a PR at uh, that comp, what, 230? 230 clean. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. But it it's just ridiculous. The people that are closest to you can hurt you the most because your guard's down typically a little bit more, um, but their words are just more piercing. And if you're, if you're a, a mom or a, a, a relative of any sort that ever takes a shot at someone because they're trying to better their lives on eating healthier and... Mm-hmm you know, trying to improve their fitness and and they get the results up from it. Yeah. Their body fat's going to drop. They're going to lose inches. They're going to gain muscle, Mm -hmm. but it's not females will never, unless you're on some sort of substance, they, they cannot look like men. It just can't happen. We're they're they're not genetically formed to do that. They can't produce enough testosterone. Right. So the, and we know we could get in the whole bodybuilding world, but I still don't even shame them. And, and that's, that's what they chose to do. They chose to take a certain substance yeah. to get them to be comparable and their and their whatever that's on them. I don't care. I don't shame them. That's their decision. But I'll tell you what, the amount of work they put in is just as much as a regional. And that's athlete. what I was going to say, yeah. but uh, you know, I don't live in that world, but I know what they have to subject yeah, themselves to not, in not order easy. to get those types of gains and to look the certain way they do. And I absolutely do not have the discipline. So I have nothing mm-hmm. but respect. Right. For any of those figure, physique, bikini, bodybuilders, yeah. power lifters, anybody, Olympic lifters, I have nothing but respect for those people. Just don't tell me you did it eating chicken breast. <laughs> <laughs> don't do it. Come on. Just say, yeah, I'm on, I'm on something. You know, tell I'm me taking what it is. supplements. Yeah, I'm taking supplements and I just somehow got bigger. Don't tell me you eat 32 chicken breasts a day because I'm going to tell you something. I eat a lot of, t- I eat a lot of protein and I, you're three and times, I am not that big. You're three times bigger than I am. So the fallout from this, you know, it can have that, you know, negative emotional impact. You, you can really negatively affect the person that you're making these comments towards whether or not you just, they throw them it. out there and dispose them. They mean it, right? Yeah. yeah, they're saying it with purpose and intent. You know, you don't say something like that to someone. Hey, you're looking like a dude. Well, but some people just are ignorant, you know, and and just say ignorant things, and and you, and you can't stop that. Yeah, but that's still a choice. You know what I mean? Like you know what you're saying. 
Like it's disrespectful. Mm -hmm. And you can usually tell that you hurt someone's feelings if you say something like that. Mm -hmm. And for you just, and it, maybe it's not, say they're repeat offenders. Mm -hmm. It's definitely malicious. They're trying to get under your skin. And what that can do to you on the, the mental side is, you know, people are putting you down and you're busting your ass in the gym. You feel good about yourself. Then you leave, you go to a birthday party. And the first thing you hear is, oh my God, you look like a dude. Mm -hmm. Okay. You just felt great about yourself. Now you're in the pits of hell yeah. because you feel hey, like- Hey, Susie, nice to see you too. Yeah. First thing you yeah. hear, and it's just, what that can do is now, now you may stop working out as much mm -hmm. or as in, intensely. And the intensity and your mentality towards your fitness yeah. can be impacted. Once that, get in, in, once that impacts yourself and then now you look in the mirror and now you start picking out your flaws because you're not working out as much. Right? Become a little bit more self-conscious than you were yesterday. Right. Because now, you, man, maybe I do or whatever. And then you start looking in the mirror and you start really picking yourself apart. Now you stop going to the gym even more. Now you feel even worse about yourself on the emotional side. Now you feel like crap because you're eating crap, mm -hmm. right? Because that's what tends to happen mm -hmm. is you can become an emotional type eater where you're like, you know, screw diet. I'm just going to mm -hmm. go eat ice cream for 10 days straight mm -hmm. and, you know, smash beer, which is <laughs> what I already do. So when, when I was a little younger, like every time I would pass my PT test, I would go like on a cheap month. <laughs> To the point where I just got tired of eating like shit. Yeah. And it would make me, it would I, like after like, I, I could, I, I could never last more than like three weeks. And after that, I was just like, I can't do this shit anymore. <laughs> yeah. Cause you can feel your artery, artery start to clog, clog up. Yeah. yeah. But you know, that's, that's the impact. And this is on the male and female side is, you know, guys don't get ridiculed nearly as much as females on, you know, you look like a man. I am a man. Yeah. <laughs> like you Thank really, you. You can't really have say a nice day. Guy. Yeah. Now, if you call him skinny, then we got problems. Yeah. Like, or you're looking thin. Yeah. Don't say you're looking thin <laughs> to a dude because it's like what? <laughs> oh my god! Like if you don't if you don't like a guy, tell me he's looking really thin. No, like no, you looks like you're losing some weight. Well, that's what I mean. You're looking some. Looks well, like you're losing some mass. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you say that and it's on. That's like you're probably going to get something right back in your mm -hmm. face. That's probably not true, but. <laughs> It can really start dr driving you to that depressed state, as you, mm -hmm. you talked about in the beginning. And now you're going. Now you're going to go off the deep end. And now you got to make this decision: like, are you going to let people on the outside really influence how you feel and think about yourself, mm -hmm. or are you going to give them the middle finger? And, and I think with ladies, sometimes they look at men and like, oh, men don't have these issues. Yeah. No, we're just a lot fucking better at hiding them and lying to ourselves and to other people about how we feel. Because guys, we we we're not we're not designed to talk about things like that. Well, I'm not walking in the gym like I look. Am I, do I look fat? Yeah, you know, I don't. Or I do, is this fit okay? I'm not. No one guy's ever going to say yeah. that. So, but but when you talk about the body uh, image issues, like I know for the longest time I was that guy that wore, you know, even though I, I didn't fit him, I wore the 38 inch jeans and extra large shirts because I didn't. I felt uncomfortable in my in my body, yeah. and then I just got to a certain point where. I think it was when I got deployed and I can only bring so much clothes with me. <laughs> and, you know, I, I was, I had to resort to buying clothes locally and some of the shit they didn't have wasn't necessarily up to my normal sizing criteria. And I just got comfortable with it. You know, when I was faced with it, I was like, okay, well, I don't look like a tub of shit. Um, I guess I look okay wearing, you know, some form fitting stuff. Yeah. Um, I feel really awkward, but, um, uh, I think I'm okay. I'm not going to die. <laughs> yeah. You know. That's very key. You know, it's I got a funny story. Guys will bust the, each other guys balls before, you know what I mean? In yeah. the gym, they'll, they'll say something about like, you can see, you can see your, your boy falling off and you're going to call him out on like, <laughs> they've skipped the gym for three straight days. Yeah. You, you've been seeing what they're eating on social hey, media. Hey, what, what are you bulking? <laughs> yeah. You're bulked. <laughs> and uh, so guys will really bust each other. And so yesterday we had a big remodel at our gym and, uh, this kid Gideon walks up and hands me this picture and it's me sitting down at one of our events on the microphone and um, his, <laughs> his dad is Pat Crom, which we've talked about a couple of times on here. And I'm like, dang Gideon, you can at least got me a, a picture of like where I'm working out and I'm, you know, lifting some moderately heavyweight looking jacked. And Pat's like, yeah, you probably couldn't find one cause you haven't been that way in a while. <laughs> I'm like, wow. <laughs> And he's right though. I can't hate on him. Like he's right. Yeah. He's right. But guys will drop. We'll take it. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, you walk up to a guy and you can see that their sleeves 
like it's not form fit around their arm. You can slide like a index finger up between the sleeve and their arm. And you put that up there. That's like the most disheveled thing because the, their arms have shrunk. <laughs> and like when you can do that and you can wiggle your finger, it's like, it's like, it's telling your boy to st- step it up. Yeah. Like get back to the gym, stop yeah. slacking off. And now if you can't do that to a female, cause they will like, that's, that's, that's a bad thing yeah. to do. They'll, they'll either run away or, or stab you. One of the two. Or they'll run away, then come back and, and stab, stab you. Because <laughs> they'll run away like, all hurt, and then they're going to get the, pissed. They'll go to the car, get their gun. Go, <laughs> <come back. laughs> yeah, we have a, so, a couple of gun carrier females at our gym, so that would probably be a mistake. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to start training with my gun. <laughs> so how do you combat all this stuff? You know, I think, one of the things that we frequently indirectly talk about on this show is uh, effective confrontation. You know, where people are that sounds saying professional, man. <laughs> it does. I'm going to start saying, <laughs> it's what the air force has trained me to do all these years. I'm going to start saying, look, don't be mad. This is effective, effective confrontation. confrontation. <laughs> I'm about to hit you with <laughs> <laughs> hashtag real shit. Um, but this is where, if someone is attacking you and that's essentially what they're doing, 100%, you know, you have the responsibility to defend yourself and the right to defend yourself when it comes to somebody saying ignorant things to you, you know, and also conversely, you have to make a decision if that's the kind of people you want in your life. Yeah. I mean, it's, confrontation has never been an issue for me. I mean, it, it's not because, you know, I like, I hate drama. I don't, I don't confront people with my issues with them or things for drama. I'm doing it as resolution. Like, Mm -hmm. here's what's up. This is how I feel. You can like it, accept it. We can talk about it and still be cool or you move, move the F on, like Mm -hmm. get away from me. I don't, I don't want to be a part of your life. Like, but this is how I feel about you. And I've always been real with people, right? So it's never been a problem for me. So if someone is going to put me on blast, then you got to bring your A game because I'm going to come back like in the infernos of hell towards you. I'm just saying like- don't, Release the hounds. That's what's going to happen though. And that's probably why there's not many people I get confronted by. And it's, I'm not trying to overpower or overwhelm you, but they know that I'm going to tell them exactly how I feel. So you better bring your A game. But what I found out in my, my life most people aren't like me, Mo. <laughs> they don't like this confrontation. They don't like putting people on blast. And you would think in my line of work, being in the military, that we're used to confrontation on a day-to-day basis. But there's still people, even yeah. in those circles, that would rather circumvent a confrontate quote unquote confrontation when it's just a conversation that needs to be had. You know, that's and, and especially when yeah. it's coming to how you're having a negative impact on my uh, feelings about myself. I'm going to say something. You know, cause that's not cool. You know, ladies, it might be a challenge. You know, you might consider yourself an introvert, but this is your personal label and brand that they're attacking. And that's fucked up. It is messed up. Yeah. It's, and I think what you said was key was it, confrontation isn't, is sometimes a conversation mm-hmm. it, and it's not the same. I can talk to you and we can have a conversation. And not, it's not, I'm com- not confronting you. We're discussing an issue. Mm-hmm. Uh, there, there can be several levels of over the top confrontation, or it can be subtle. Like, Hey man, what's up? Like, yeah. you know, I heard this, w- what's going on with that? Yeah, but, it doesn't need to turn into a Jerry Springer episode. Right. <laughs> it doesn't have to take it to that level, but there's a lot that can be solved through conversation, through confliction. And then there's a resolution between the two. Mm-hmm. Um, but when, when you, these things that people are saying and like the person who messaged us and other people I've talked to, these are straight attacks on them, Mm -hmm. straight on attacks on something they love, straight attacks on their emotional and mental state. Mm -hmm. And that is so, that is so wrong. And it falls in the uncool category. (laughs) It does. (laughs) It's definitely uncool. And especially when it's coming from your mom, Mm -hmm. your, your someone in that inner circle, the inner circle, social media, you know, some trolls people, are trolls. Yeah. They can put that out there. And it's going to hurt for a second. And you're like, then you can just delete them mm-hmm. and block or them. block them. You can't really block your mom. <laughs> like, <laughs> mom, you're blocked. <laughs> What's that mean? They won't even know what it means. Like what? I, I don't understand. Mom, you're muted. Like, <laughs> like you can't really do it. 
you can't delete your mom. <laughs> you can't block your mom. You can't, you know, you can delete and block your friends, which yeah. that's what you need to do. If like Mo said earlier, are they really your friends? Mm-hmm. No, they're jealous and envious because you know what? They're stuck in the past. They didn't want to move forward. They don't want to put in the time and work that it, that you do. They, they're so jealous that you can actually get your ass up and work out every morning at mm-hmm. 5 30 AM and feel great about yourself while they're sitting there still asleep dragging their feet to get to work, hating their job, hating their life, going home, hating everything when they get home. No wonder they're mad at you because you're doing something that they want but don't want to put the work into. And you really want to flip the script on someone like that. Challenge them to join you in your fitness regime for 30 days. (laughs) Good luck. (laughs) I mean, real talk though. Yeah. Yeah, you can. I mean, that would be a great way to try to diffuse it. But, Mm -hmm. you know, I think you can, there's two ways you can handle it. One, you can be straightforward and say, look, don't ever say that again. Mm-hmm. I love the way I, d- I look. Yeah, I don't appreciate no, I don't, your, your hateration. Right. I don't yeah. appreciate it. I, I put a lot of work into this. It's mm-hmm. something I love. I love the, I love to compete against myself every day. Mm-hmm. I love eating. I love eating clean because I feel gr- better and I feel great and have more energy. And I, I just love every aspect of fitness. Don't do it. Or you can ignore it. And then it's going to happen again and, and, le- can, and let it build up. Inside it's going to build you. up. And then what you're going to do is you're not going to do anything to that person. You're going to take it out on yourself mm-hmm. and you're going to let yourself go. You're not going to work out. You're mm-hmm. going to despise it. You're going to be depressed. You're going to be mad, upset. And now what that person has actually done has removed the one thing from you that you love with every ounce of your heart. Mm-hmm. They've removed that from you with malicious intent And you allowed it because you just held everything in. And and by not having that conversation, you're going to develop resentment. And I saw a quote one time and said, resentment is like taking poison, expecting the other person to die. You know, you hold that in that negative energy. It's going to fuck you up. It's Mm -hmm. going to eat at you, you know, and something's going to give, whether it's your emotional strength, you know, how you feel about yourself, you know, get it out, have that conversation, be done with it and go do you boo. I can't really top that. He dropped a sweet <laughs> quote and then he dropped it with boo. <laughs> so, I mean, I mean, everybody out there listening, it's affected you. I know it has. Mm-hmm. It's affected me. It's affected bro. It's affected my wife. It's affected my kids. It's affected everybody, you know, who's walked on this earth, who's had an interaction with at least one person. Yeah. And Pat, quit being so mean to me. <laughs> <laughs> I got feelings, bro. <laughs> Don't listen to others. I yeah. got feelings. Yeah. These things will affect you mentally and emotionally. And we'll have that secondary carryover into your gym, you know, with these things that you love that have become part of your life, part of your structure, you know, part of your ism, you know, don't let that happen. Um, Fallout. I mean, it can be countless, you know, you could unfortunately come to the point where you quit making this part of your life because you're tired of those haters hating on you. But if you confront the situation, have those conversations and maybe start uh, thinning out that friends list might be what you have to do. Yeah, I keep that friends list small because you can't have that many friends. I'm just, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Like true friends. Do that, you really have 1,200 friends? Hey, if you can call someone up at 3.30 in the morning, they're going to come without question, come do whatever you need to be mm-hmm. done. That's with, your friend. With a rope, a shovel, and some trash bags. Yeah, because <laughs> they know who you're burying. <laughs> you're burying that other friend that they've hated for a long time <laughs> that's been talking smack about the way you look. Yeah, <laughs> bye-bye. So again, um bringing all this to a close, you know, this is all about you at the end of the day. Um, but also branching off of you is your family. You know, maybe you have kids, maybe you have a spouse, you know, they see you doing these amazing things. They see the, you know, your friends have seen these transformations, you know, whether you know it or not, you're all kind of a role model to somebody. Yeah. A huge role model to me. And I'll, I'll end it with this too, is your guys's hard work and dedication that I see every day in the gym as an owner, as a trainer, it, it fuels me. It motivates me. It pushes me to another level. I talk about you guys all the time. I give stories on the accomplishments that you guys achieve that your other friends are putting down. Um, it means the world to me that these people that bust their ass in this gym for a healthier lifestyle, a, a they want to perform well in, in the sports side, just everyday CrossFit and fitness type. I appreciate it. And you know, all those haters out there, man, just kick him, kick him to the curb because they don't mean nothing. Their words are, are useless. They're jealous. And, you know, jealousy is the quickest way to try to get at someone. And you can be malicious with your attacks. 
but you can just do what I do and just give them the middle finger and roll out. <laughs> like that's just the way it is. Like hate on me all you want, yeah. but I'm going to tell you, bro, like you can hate on me. I'm going to smile and flip you off because I know you're hating me because mm-hmm. you ain't me. <laughs> <laughs> They hate us because they ain't us, Mo. (laughs) Let your haters be your motivators. All right, so bringing this week's episode to a close. This week's call to action. Why don't you go ahead and share our page with your friends and have them become members of our community as well. It really helps us get exposure. And also, don't forget, leave those five-star ratings on Facebook as well as on iTunes. And that brings this week's episode to a close. I'm Mo and I'm out. Peace. Thank you for listening to the One More Rip Podcast. You can follow us on Facebook and Instagram at One More Rip Podcast or on Twitter at Can I Get One More or shoot us an email at Can I Get One More at gmail.com. If that's not you, then let them know it bothers you. Yeah. Like I said, the whole confrontation piece. I ain't afraid of confrontation. You call me fat? Yeah, P H A T. This week's call to action, go ahead and share your page with some of your friends. Our page. <coughs> they ain't got a page. <laughs> Thank God. Share your yeah. Facebook. I ain't worried about your page. Share my page, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> <laughs>